Alright, I'm going to go through and debunk this other video by Anderson where he literally claims that divorcing an unbelieving spouse, that Ezra was wrong to divorce an unbelieving spouse. I, I kid you not. I mean, again, I've said this in other videos, this is uh, Roman Catholicism because I showed this in one of my videos about Anderson's Catholic heresy on divorce. The uh, Catholic Church says that divorce, uh, not, uh, sorry, the Catholic Church says that marriage is a sacrament. It's a holy sacrament and it applies to your salvation. So Anderson's saying that divorce, and the Catholic Church says that divorce is never allowed no matter what the case is. And I'm going to show you some, some scripture proving that if that you're allowed to divorce an unbelieving spouse. I mean, Anderson, he's, he's basically teaching a Roman Catholic doctrine that you can never divorce no matter what because it's a sacrament. It's a holy sacrament. And in the video, I, I went down here and I quoted him the verse about not being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Someone else comments, I smell a Jesuit. You know, amen to that. Um, this is nothing more than, I'm sorry, nothing more than, than Jesuitical Catholic heresies. This thing of divorce is never allowed no matter what the circumstances are. It's it's how the Catholic Church keeps their followers, one of the ways the Catholic Church keeps their followers in bondage. So I'm going to play this, I'm going to play the whole thing, and go through and debunk it. And let me just turn the volume up. And also one other th point I want to make, is when he reads Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, those ver those books are very clearly condemning miscegenation, but Anderson twists it to say, oh, it's talking about heathen, unbelieving wives. Uh, no, it's very clearly talking about miscegenation, not just belief, not, not just the fact that they didn't. the reason why God didn't want the Israelites to marry the uh, other kindreds is not because it, it's not just because they didn't believe in God, it's because God was dealing with, with a specific nation, the nation of Israel, and the other kindreds. He didn't want them mixing with the other kindreds. Again, read read Ezra, read Ezra chapter nine, Ezra chapter ten, Nehemiah chapter nine, and Nehemiah chapter thirteen. It goes over all that. But I digress. Let's get right into this. Look what verse ten says, or verse one of chapter ten says. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shechaniah the son of Jehiel. One of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. You know, we're sorry, it's true, we did this. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. He's going to check and I, he's going to give the solution. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them. So let's just divorce everybody's heathen wife, everybody who married a heathen, divorce them, and the children that they had with those wives, just get rid of all of them. So according to Anderson, the Israelites were supposed to actually stay with, an he with a heathen wife. I mean, this is Roman Catholicism. This is just, it's a sacrament. Marriage is a holy sacrament. I mean, so he's basically saying that the Israelites had to stay with their heathen wives. I mean, huh? I mean, this is just weird. It's, it's totally weird. Um, again, the Bible does give grounds for divorcing a spouse if they are unbelieving. Okay, and again, he won't deal with the issue of, as, of Ezra and Nehemiah, which are very clearly dealing, they're not dealing with religion, they're dealing with the thing of miscegenation of them, of the races mixing. Okay, he won't deal with that, but even then he's still twisting it. I mean, it's, it's insanity. I mean, they are allowed to divorce their heathen spouses, so according to Anderson, they can't divorce an unbelieving spouse, the Israelites, you know? Weird. Let's just get rid of them. According to the counsel of my Lord, notice the lowercase elder. He's not saying, oh, this is something that was counseled to me from Jehovah God here. Okay. He's saying, according to the counsel of my Lord, he's saying, hey, you know, if it's something that Nehemiah or excuse me, Ezra goes along with, you know, it, he's, he's presenting this as an idea to Ezra saying, look, why don't we do this? You know, and basically, if you go along with it, you're going to be the one who runs this. You're going to be the one who counsels this. And, and you're going to set up the family court to deal with all these divorces, okay? According to the counsel of my Lord, referring to Ezra, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Now, what they're saying there when it says, let it be done according to the law, they're not saying, hey, let's follow God's word here. What they're saying is, we're not just going to, throw these women and children out, we're actually going to legally divorce them. We're going to actually do it according to the law. We're going to give them a bill of divorcement. The proof that that's what is meant is that that's what they do. They end up setting up a family court and it takes them over two and a half months of just continual divorcing to get through all the divorce proceedings. 
So what they're saying is we're not just going to throw out these women and children. We're going to actually do this according to the law and actually do it with a, a legal divorce. Okay. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Come on, we're with you, man. Let's do it. It's going to be great. You know, notice, notice the uh, carnival preaching, just yelling and screaming and slamming the pulpit. It's mind control tactics. I mean, I mean, with the whole IFB system, they'll do that. They'll just scream and yell and bang the pulpit and just, you know, just it gets the flesh going up and it, it lowers, you know, I remember it being said that it lowers the ability so that for them to think critically because they just, the flesh is going up and they're just like, oh yeah, you know, and and, and it makes you think that the, the, the um, man of God has the Holy Spirit inside of them, but it's actually just them being carnal and fleshly. You know, it's carnival preaching, best way, to, best way to describe it. Great! Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests and Levites and all Israel to swear that they would do according to this word, and they swear. Then Ezra rose up before the house of God and went into the chamber of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together into Israel, and that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited, and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Now look, plain and simple, and we're going to keep reading here and finish this, Ezra is wrong. Ezra is wrong. Shechaniah is wrong. That's not so Ezra was, Ezra was wrong to divorce a pagan. Okay not how you fix things. You know, oh, my wife doesn't want to serve God. My wife's a heathen. My wife's unsafe. Oh, just get rid of her. Well, you have kids. Get rid of the kids. Wrong. Is that what Christ taught about marriage? Is that what the Bible taught? You know, the Bible said in Matthew, and we're going to come back to this and finish this, but go to Matthew 19. Keep your finger here. And by the way, where does it say in Ezra chapter 10, and God said, yes, go do that. Or, or why doesn't it say something along the lines of, and there arose a prophet of God that commanded them to do, you know, thus saith the Lord. What? Well, Ezra was a prophet of God. You know, ridiculous. But he's going to go to Matthew 19, and that's actually a good passage that proves that uh, there is grounds for divorce. But here's a good verse to throw at them. Um, let's do this. Here's a good one to throw at them if they say, oh, you can't divorce a heathen spouse. Okay, make sure you use this one on them. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, 6, verse 14 to 16. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light, hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, talking about Satan, and uh, or what part hath, hath he that believeth with an infidel, unbelievers, uh, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are, are, sorry, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, I will be the, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So, your, temp, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So if you're yoked together with an unbeliever, and of course I'll read verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So you're supposed to come out of them, be separate. So when it comes to having a, a spouse who's unbelieving, you are allowed to, because again it says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I'm paraphrasing. But if you're having an unbelieving spouse, you're unequally yoked with the unbeliever. If he's refusing to convert and refusing to change, then you're you're unequally yoked with the unbeliever. You know, um, what does it say? Uh, you know, where where's the verse? Yeah, he, what, what part? He that believeth with an infidel. So if you're, you're you're doing that, you're committing a sin. If you're married to a heathen spouse, and you, he is not believing and he's refusing to convert, that is, you're yoked together with unbelievers. You're with an infidel. Um, and he says your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. So this Catholic nonsense of, oh, it's never allowed no matter what, you know, it's not, not scriptural. You know, you're supposed to be separate. In verse 17 it talks about that. So I just wanted to go over that because Anderson teaches lots of different Catholic types of doctrine. And one thing I want to go over in this video is uh, this thing where Anderson, the reason why it's important for true Bible believers, and Brian brought this out in his recent video exposing Anderson, is that Anderson is being raised up to basically demonize us, uh, real Bible believers. And if you see right here, a lot of the stances that he takes are stances that, that a Bible-believing a Bible Christian would take. You know, all this other stuff. Let me go down to his page. Um, let's look down. 
you know, he's talking about like against the war in Iran, you know, um, all this other stuff. Uh, let me just go down there. You know, so I mean, Christians ought to oppose, you know, unjust wars like the one that was going to happen with Iran. Uh, you know, against abortion, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying to look for more else. Because he had some other stuff that were right. You know, against Calvinism, against all this other stuff. So stances that Bible believers do take, and that and that should a true Bible believer should and would take. Uh, let me just go down. Uh, let me see there. Uh, you know, he's King James only, so he's being raised up as like the king, the leader of the King James only movement. All this other stuff. Uh, let me just go down. You know, against Seventh-day Adventism, against communism. So stances that, again, stances that a, a, Bible, a Bible believer should and would take. Let me just keep going down some more and more and more. But he mixes in all of his, his heresies and errors with those uh, with those biblical truths. You know, against Calvinism, against, um, you know, against, oh, I'm trying to look for that. Against Calvinism, he also has, um, you know, uh, he had some stuff about homeschooling. I'm trying to find that one. Uh, let me just see. I think he had some stuff. See, you know, again, talking about musical intru- instruments, uh, passing the offering plate. I mean, that. I mean, there's debates back and forth whether tithing is biblical. I personally, I don't believe that tithing is biblical. Um, you know, it gets against drinking alcohol, at, you know, which is good. I mean, it's stances that a Christian should take. I'm talking about their soul winning, soul damning. I like to call it uh, mega marathon over in Europe. Uh, you know, against the ESV. So again, he's it backs up my point that he's being raised up to think that oh, he's he's um, a King James Bible believer. He's he's uh, you know against you know against theft. So basic doctrines that a Christian would take. Uh, and there he is condemning Catholicism uh, with Francis Chan, which is ironic because a lot of what he, a lot of what he and Chan preach are both they both preach Roman Catholicism. Uh, teaching against repentance. So yeah, he he's wrong in a lot of areas, but a lot of the stances he does take are right. So that's why it's important for Bible believers to stand against heretics like this, because he'll make people think that that he's with us, and he's not. He is a false. He's a false teacher, and he he's been uh, corrected and tried to. People have tried to correct him over and over again. He just will not be corrected. Um, he did, he's just too prideful. He's very he's very angry. His followers have a very bitter spirit. I've dealt with them on my channel. I dealt with them in the comment section. Uh, they they're very very bitter and angry. If if you go against them, they'll like they'll call you all kinds of like just personal attacks and all all sorts of stuff. And obviously, like being sarcastic and name calling is biblical, but the way they do it, it's just bitter and angry. That's what it comes down to. I mean that they'll say, oh, you, like I mean I can't I can't even repeat some of the stuff they say. That's how filthy. That's how just disgusting and filthy things they say. Uh, you know, all this other stuff. So yeah, that's why it's important to look at the Gentile bloodline of Jesus Christ. Yeah, sure. Uh, but that's the thing. So Anderson is right in a lot of areas. That's why it's important for us to stand against him and say, no, he's not. He's not part of us. As Brian said, we're supposed, we should make a ruckus and and make it very, very clear. Like 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 every Bible believer needs to come out and expose Anderson or say like at least say that Anderson's not part of us. He's not one of us. Just like the whole Westboro Baptist you know cult or a lot of these. Uh, street preachers, or as Brian calls them, street papists, um, because they all just teach Roman Catholic doctrine. They are teaching heresy. They're they're making Bible believers look bad. So it's important for us to stand against uh, cults and movements like this. Uh, and also, not to like quote Brian too much, but he did bring out a good point. I brought this out in some of my videos too, that the new IFB is falling apart. I mean, they have a lot of like Anderson has a lot of skeletons in their closet, uh, or not Anderson. The new IFB has a lot of skeletons in his closet. Uh, I mean, look with Donnie Romero, that's one good example. I mean, seeing prostitutes and, and gambling with church money, there's all this other stuff too. I mean, the new IFB is falling apart. This is a new thing with uh, Michael Johnson and, and uh, Manly Perry and some of these other guys. So it is falling apart, this, this new IFB satanic cult. Uh, and I, I think it's important for us to expose it at this moment as it's like falling apart and, you know, infighting and all this other stuff. So yeah, it's important for, again, I'll, I'll say it again, it's important for us to stand against heretics like Anderson, or else he's going to be raised up to demonize us and get us persecuted. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.